Society and we're live. We are live with another series and yeah, let's hop right in. Let me type real quick hello into the chat so you guys know that you can get in touch this way. And then I hope everybody's doing good. I hope you enjoyed our, not our, my um, advanced Ironman course or my advanced Ironman series. Um, to all of those who took part, if you want to get into um, a training of that sort, uh, hop onto my homepage and um, start with the free week, free week of training. Once you've done that you and you liked it, of course, I only want you to get in touch if you really liked it, then you can schedule a call with me and get into further discussion about that. So we have some old friends. Ali Gun is there. WAM is there, who is new. I don't know who that is yet. And um, yes, so <clears throat> without any further ado, let's let's jump in. We are going to be talking about um, beginning tips for athletes who have maybe here. I'm gonna go like this. Um, who have maybe signed up for their first triathlon? Maybe somebody who's getting straight up started with freestyle swimming for whatever reason. Maybe somebody for CrossFit. Maybe. I've had people in the past come to me, they've just been swimming. Uh, they've just been swimming breaststroke with the head out and maybe the neck is hurting and they want to get into freestyle swimming. And yeah, th this is the kind of people that this is for. That being said, do not underestimate how many really, really, really good swimmers and triathletes still have trouble mastering the fundamentals. Okay. Without mentioning any names, I have just helped out one of our best female Olympic triathlon athletes with the basics in freestyle swimming. She did that extremely well, put the things that we talked about into practice right away. And even somebody in that level looked better immediately in swimming. So don't underestimate the basics. The basics are the foundation of everything. And you would be surprised how few people actually understand how to properly swim freestyle. With that being said, um, anymore, maybe this is your second season and your swim was a nightmare in your first triathlon season. And maybe this is your fifth season and you just don't understand how it works. This is probably, unfortunately, most of you. So this also helps. And yeah, I'm here to help. Okay. And this is what I have in mind. So today we're talking about what is coming up in the series. Then in our second live session, we will be talking about what kind of equipment you need. And we're going to be talking about body position and the godfather of all the swim drills. Uh, I will let you know what that is. You can probably guess those who have been with um, Swim Amazing for a little bit longer know. But we're going to talk about that also. Then in our third live session, we are actually swimming freestyle. Some of you may wonder what, how is this possible? I am going from head out of the water to swimming freestyle um, that quickly. And the answer is yes. I've had people who have worked one on one with me. And most of those swam freestyle in the first one on one lesson that we had with each other. And the trick there is the use of equipment. I'm going to tell you what you need and how we're going to use it. And I promise you will be swimming freestyle very quickly. Then we're going to move into our fourth stream, which will be kicking and general concepts of drag. The fifth one will be timing and mastering our breath while we swim. And the sixth and last one will be how we actually remove the equipment and how we are getting into training. Okay. And I think we're going to go with Tuesday and Thursday again, because I like to get through these things a little bit quicker. If we do only one a week, it's going to take forever to get through it. 
And I think Tuesday and Thursday works fine, unless I have a week like last week where I was busy with uh, the German Swimming Federation for basically the straight week. And then I need to figure out a way to communicate with you guys that we are going to miss one week. But for the most part, when I'm home, we're going to do this Tuesday and Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Okay? <clears throat> okay. In the equipment stream, what are we going to talk about? We are going to... I'm going to show you how to look cool and how not to buy twice. I think both of these, both, both of these things, English language, not so easy for a German guy, um, are important. To me personally, style matters. Maybe I'm just a little bit vain. Maybe I'm a little bit of a prima donna. Maybe, but to me it matters. If I look stupid, I don't enjoy myself. So... I would not want to run around with um, goggles that, with, all the, with, uh, with a lack of a better term, look like shit and look like I want to go scuba diving. I would want to wear something that at least looks something like a swimmer. And promise, promise, I promise you that these will actually fit your face better also. Um, they will be very comfortable. They will be not leaking water and... Yeah, I've, I don't know. I've had tons of goggles on my face and so did my swimmers and I can tell you what actually works and what does not. Same for um, um, swimsuits, same for paddles. We just had the topic of paddles with uh, within my membership and uh, I'm probably going to put some of that equipment out there into a little bit of a bad light but I'm just going to say it as it is, in my opinion, okay, always in my opinion. Um, but yeah, there, there are some stuff that's just lots of fun, looks cool and works really well. You're going to buy it and you're going to have years of fun training with that. And then there's other stuff. If you buy it, it's just not going to work. And I, it's, I think it's my job to let you know the truth, to tell you the truth so that you actually have cool stuff. Um, and then I will also tell you, of course, what you as a beginner will need because you don't need anything. For example, if I give you a parachute for working on your strength, you're probably gonna drown. So we don't want that. We want the stuff that actually makes sense. I'm gonna explain that also in the second live stream. And yeah, that will be basically the second live stream um, combined with um, body position and our first swim drill. Then the third one, we are actually swimming freestyle. As I promised, we're gonna go into that fairly quickly. And I'm going to tell you how we do this, what, equi what equipment we are using. And um, yeah, I, I think it's the fastest way to get started. And I also think it's the fastest way to actually learn how to swim freestyle. And I will let you know what you need to focus on. And I promise you, we will be swimming laps very, very soon. In that, after that stream, you will be able to swim laps. And that's pretty cool. If you go from swimming breaststroke with your head out, out of the water to swimming actual freestyle laps, within one or two swim sessions that should get you motivated and looking for more. I think that at least that's how I would feel. And um, yeah, of course, if, if we're going to swim laps, I'm also going to teach you the basics of the freestyle pole. But trust me, it's not rocket science. It's not really complicated. Now the feel and where the pressure comes from is a little bit more complicated and takes a lot of time to develop, but just understanding how you have to move your arms is actually quite simple. Um, okay, that's that stream. And then the next stream will be kicking and understanding drag. Now you might think that these are two completely different topics and to some extent I may agree with you, but in general, when I talk about the kick, this usually gives me a great starter to get into the conversation of drag. And once we get into that stream, you will understand why. And yeah, I'm going to talk about drag. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to make sure that you understand why this is so important. And then we're going to talk about different kicking styles and which one is right for you. And then probably a question that lots of you out there have, what can you do when your legs always seem to sink? I think I have a pretty good answer for that also. 
Then we're going to move into the next stream, which will be the correct timing of the freestyle breath. This is something that is also not as easy as people might think. Again, here I have very advanced swimmers within my elite swimming team here in Saarbrücken who are still struggling with that. Um, and they are some of the best swimmers in their age group. So this is not as easy as you think. And it's not something that is natural to everybody. But I also think that this is a topic that is overlooked for the most part and never really well explained. So again, I promise I will give you the simplest way possible to understand this, how to implement it, and you will understand how to do it. I promise yet again, you will be fine. And we will meet our favorite drill once again, because this one works really well for your breathing technique also. And after this one, we're basically swimming freestyle already. Okay, we've understood the kick, the pull, we've already been swimming, we've been doing strokes with equipment. And now that we understand the way you actually breathe when swimming freestyle, we will be actually swimming freestyle. And of course, of course, it's not going to be that easy. That's why I wrote, to be honest, we are starting with getting a breath without drowning. That's probably what the reality is going to be looking like for most of you. But there will be some out there watching right now who are very talented and gifted for the sport of swimming and they will be implementing that extremely quickly. Okay, but that's not what it's about. It's about each of you individually and that you try to be better than the last time. You don't try to be better than the other girl or guy next to you because that's not within your control, but you try to be better than yourself the previous session. And that I can help you with. And then <clears throat> towards the end, we will be removing equipment the right way. Okay, I always said in the past that in the beginning of your swimming journey, it is about learning rather than training. And this is, in my opinion, 100% correct. In the beginning, you have to learn and understand the movements. Okay, where are my hands and my hands entering? Where am I supposed to pull? What's the timing of the pull? When am I supposed to pull? When am I supposed to breathe? What do I need to do to have a proper body position? Where do I look when I swim? What are my legs supposed to do? Is it good if I kick all the time? Is it good if I only kick sometimes? All this kind of stuff. You just need to understand it need to find your own style. And that is the key in the beginning. And I also said this in the, in, the, in the past, it's important to start out with very small distances when you learn freestyle swimming. If you're in a 25 meter pool, perfect, because then you can rest after each length. Much better than a 50 meter pool, if that's all you have, also fine. For example, you can work on swimming 25 freestyle and then 25 backstroke or breaststroke or whichever one may be easier for you. But in the beginning, it's very important that each stroke matters and that each stroke is done with a high level of focus and with the right thoughts in mind as far as your technique goes. Okay, but eventually, once we understood that, it's time to start to train your body because at the end of the day, that stuff also matters. There are lots of people who are always drilling, 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 sprinting, 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 and they tend to forget that a triathlon is usually 1.5K in swimming length and up. So you have to be able to maintain your technique over a longer period of time. Does you no good if you can do a 25 pretty and fast? Okay. But what really matters is what you look like after five minutes into your swim. Okay. And that's the job of the coach. And yeah, so I'm, like I said, we're now starting to develop your swimming performance and it is essential to take this step by step and still use tons of equipment. Only we're going to reduce the equipment and get into swimming. Okay. And that's basically what's going to happen over the next one, two, three weeks. Okay. 
if you are interested in a beginner course, you can drop a yes in the comments. And you should write me a direct message on Instagram at Jan P. Wolfgarten. Okay. If we get 20 or more people, I will build a course with you. Okay. So you will be the first people. You will get a lot of input. You will get tons of one-on-one -on -one feedback. I have just built a course for um, elite Ironman swimmers with the goal of dropping maybe from one hour to 55 minutes or from even to 50 minutes. So this is a very intense, high volume, yeah, advanced course. And this worked really, really well. I met with them every week in a live stream and I th feedback was very good. And I'm, I can, I can see myself do this for beginners also. <laughs> just just to, to throw that out there, that goes totally against anything that I wanted to do with um, the things that I learned about business because it really said to focus on one thing and one thing specifically, but whatever. I'm just gonna do it because maybe a lot more of you are actually interested in getting started and starting to learn freestyle the right way than the other way and whatever. Right now, I, I can build a course on the side. So if you guys, if you guys want to, I would be very happy to do that with you. Just again, for, for better, it's better if you write me on Instagram because here the chat will be closed towards the end of that stream and then I cannot see it anymore. So write me a direct message on Instagram and then if we get 20 people, we are talking about how we're going to get this started. <clears throat> okay, now is the time where I will already start to answer your questions. Again, one thing is very important. There are no silly questions and there should be absolutely nothing for you to be ashamed of. We have all been beginners at some point. And yeah, with that in mind, fire away. Anything I can help you with, I'm happy to help you with, especially for the beginners. <clears throat> Maybe we can get started with, let's do this so I can get a, a, an idea of our, <laughs> of our 12 um, viewers right now. Out of the 12 people watching, type a one if you are swimming for two years or less, a two if you're swimming for, for two to four years, or a three if you're swimming for more than four years. That would be interesting. So one, if you have started like two years ago, a two if you started four years ago, and a three if you started more than four years ago. Okay, so we have a one, a three. Sigi, I know already, I've been, we've talked before in the past. Noah is a one, a three, a two. Florian, I know, Florian's already been taken care of. It's improving basically weekly right now. Okay, so right now we have two people who would be saying that they are real beginners. Um, so to all the others who are watching who typed in two or three, you can still message me on, in on Instagram, of course, and we can still talk about coaching, but the beginner's course would not be for you. Okay, just to get that out of the way. If I'm building this course, it would be for people who really are still struggling with getting a breath. They're struggling with maybe swimming 400 freestyle without taking a break, that kind of thing. Okay, people who signed up for a triathlon and thinking, oh my God, how am I possibly going to swim 1.5K in open water? Those are the people I'm looking for. 
Okay, everybody else needs something different again. So see, the 400 meter test is already about seven minutes. That's not even bad at all. It's pretty good. The thing is, I think <clears throat> probably everybody can. No, I don't. I don't even know if that's true. I think. I think everybody who typed in two or three. If you have not done so by now, you should head on to um, SomeAmazingUniversity.com and sign up for my free week of training. And I think everybody who typed in two or three and has not done that yet will improve a lot just by watching that free course because I put in about 45 minutes of um, freestyle theory and this is a little bit more advanced. This is not for the people who are still trying to, t to catch a breath and who are still sinking. This is more for the people who are already swimming. Okay, so this would probably be perfect for somebody like Aligun and Paddy95 and Wham and um, yeah, Sigi, I think already did it. Probably some others did it also. Okay, yeah, for, for, for those, this would be this would be ideal for like i said this the, the the complete beginners course is for people who are still don't know how to take a breath are struggling to keep their face in the water that kind of thing because i think it goes hand in hand if maybe some of the stuff that i will be explaining there would be beneficial for everyone but it would only be maybe 10 percent, and the rest if i write a training plan with 1200 meters in volume <laughs> most of you would probably be probably be really bored and not challenged in the right way but that being said um i'm i'm, I'm ready to help you right now okay this this shouldn't be about the course all the time I'm, I'm ready to help you right now if you have any questions um i'm i'm, I'm gonna try my best to help you so if you have something that you're really struggling with right now when you go swim Here's a question. Yeah, and as you referred as someone, as you referred as someone whom style matters, would you be interested in your thoughts of total immersion swimming, style-wise and speed-wise? Style matters. Okay, yeah. When I said style matters, I meant actually what I look like when I go swim. <laughs> okay, style as far as when you swim. I'm I'm I don't really care to be honest. What I do care about is that your basics are good. Okay, let let's take let's take Andreas Waschburger for example. When you watch him sw for those who don't know, Andreas Waschburger is one of the athletes that's currently swimming with me. He is a long distance um swimmer for a long time. He made the German Olympic team in 2012 and finished in the top 10 in a 10k open water event and I prepared him last year on his way to breaking the world record in the English channel. And lots of people when they see him swim think, oh my god, this looks awful. But if you really understand freestyle swimming to a high level, you understand that he is doing the basics really well. Like his head positioning is always right. Therefore, his body positioning is always right. His stroke underwater is actually pretty good. It might look a little bit wild as far as his rhythm goes out of the water. But if you really understand how distance freestyle works and where the power is created, he is doing a lot of things really, really well. Obviously. Otherwise, he wouldn't have made the Olympic team for Germany. Okay, so don't be fooled necessarily with how swimming looks. Now to your question. As far as... Um, Total immersion goes, I have not bought the course because I I think I can swim freestyle well enough so that I don't need it. And um, I have not, I don't know, I don't really see the need to buy the course to... What I've seen on YouTube, I've seen some stuff on YouTube, makes a lot of sense. I think the, the, the thing that they teach with head and body positioning is good. 
What I think may be a problem with total immersion is that they don't really teach from my knowledge. Like I said, I didn't buy the course. If anything that I say right now is within that course, I apologize. Okay, but I think what they don't really teach is swimming fast. They teach very efficient, smooth swimming, easy swimming, so to say. And if that was my goal, I would probably teach it almost exactly the same as they do. But the idea for my athletes and for what I'm offering as a coach is performance. To me, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Generally, people who are fast have a good technique and it looks pretty good. But I said it before, I couldn't care less. My idea is to get you as fast as possible for your situation. That's that's my idea of, of, of my job as a swim coach. Okay, so I hope that answered your question. Mm, I find it hard and complex to swim after a pace in the trainings plan. Okay, so you're struggling with the different intensities that a training plan demands from the athlete. So let's say you have zone one, which is very, very easy. You have zone two, which is base, maybe heart rate 20 to 22. Then you have zone three, which is aerobic um, threshold swimming. You have zone four, which is anaerobic threshold swimming. You have zone five, which is basically all out effort over longer distances. And you have zone six, six which is sprint. And I agree this is hard in the beginning but um, I think in the beginning you could simplify it a little bit and only go with three intensity zones because one and two kind of blend into one another two um, two and th no sorry three and four somewhat blend into one another and five and six somewhat blend into one another okay probably more like four and five two and three and one and two something like that okay but you can simplify it a lot by um, just using the stuff that Brett Sutton wrote, writes in his training plans and he just goes medium moderate and mad and that's pretty good if you just work with that I think that's a pretty good approach and then the better you get you can add the other intensity zones to make your training even more complex but you should have three if you only if you're only like a like a light switch and you go from standing to swimming to standing that's not good you need to implement some some sort of different intensities in your training plan to make your body adapt adapt faster <clears throat> um Sigi says there was a documentation on sr lately that's correct that's all, that's a very good one so if you have free time and you have absolutely nothing to do um type in sr which i think is the saarländische rundfunk i don't know but if you Google it, Andreas Waschburger, Amel Kanal, you're probably going to find it. And it was, it was a good one. Um, Guacamole is asking, what should I focus when I swim 400 and 820 to improve? Um, that, is, that is a question that I cannot answer. I need some more facts. For example, how long have you been swimming? To Guacamole right now. How long, you, how long have you been swimming? If you're going swimming, how far do you go within a training session? And um, ah, sweet Deutsche Rundfunk is what it stands for. Okay. <clears throat> and so, how long is your training session? How many times a week are you swimming? Those are important factors. And yeah, then it would probably help to see your technique, analyze it a little bit. But if you give me the first three questions, like how much are you swimming when you go into a swim session? How many times per week? <clears throat> and how long have you been swimming for? I can I can get a better picture of your situation. <clears throat> okay. Anja, Grüße zurück. Hier, ich habe extra mal ein Trikot für die für die für die für die, für die Frankfurter Zuschauer. Und eine Eins von Johannes. Okay. Okay, so Guacamole, if you're still there, give me a better give me a better picture of your situation, please. Then I can <clears throat> I can help you. But while I wait, so that I don't just sit here and look in the camera. Mm. Ah, there we go. Thousand meter 
thousand meters two times a week two months okay so you're in the very 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 beginning so you would be good for a beginner swim course <clears throat> basically if you're in your situation, I don't even know if I would even recommend doing a 400 meter test because it's too early. If you're only swimming for two months, I think you are still in the learning phase. Maybe you're just exiting, but you're probably still in it because you've not done it properly. So you're probably stuck in the learning phase, to be honest with you. What you should be doing is you should be structuring your training in a way that you're using fins, number one, lots of fins, lots of snorkel, <clears throat> pull kick, Probably a nose clip, but now I'm already getting into detail of the second or third stream about equipment. I think it was the second one. And you should be <clears throat> doing lots of very short distances. So 25s, maybe 50s, and that kind of thing. And you should structure your training session to be 1 to 1.5 kilometers in length. Ich höre mir morgen noch mal den Stream an und probiere den Trainingsplan so ein bisschen Okay, good. Um, okay, I hope that helps. So short distances. But yeah, jo join on join on Thursday again. The live stream on Thursday will already help you a lot, in my opinion. We'll give you one technical drill that you can implement right away. And it will also... Wait a second. Ah, next Tuesday you're swimming freestyle. <clears throat> but yeah, join. Join me on Tuesday on, on Thursday and Tuesday again, you'll be fine. <clears throat> Do you normally use nose clips with a snorkel? I don't. I personally don't, but from experience with um, the people that I work with, the beginners, nine out of ten people, when they put a snorkel on and they swim for the first time, complain that the water shoots up their nose. And that is actually quite unpleasant because of the chlorine that's in the water. It's not a fun experience. I I don't know what I do. I think I um, do bubbles just a little bit. But this stuff, if you've, if you've basically swam for your whole life, this is natural. I don't think about it. <clears throat> the only time I have to think about it is if I spin and I'm on my back. If I'm on my back, I have to make sure that... I blow bubbles extra hard, otherwise I also get water in my nose. But when I'm on my belly, I have no problem with that stuff. Okay, then you're fine. Then you're then you're like me. Then you don't need it. If you if you don't have trouble with that, then you don't need a nose clip at all. A nose clip, by the way, is also a good thing if you struggle with um, allergy. I know lots of people who get a very runny nose after they get out of the swim training and a nose clip can help a lot with that also. Okay, another another question from Gokomoli. <clears throat> okay, that's a good that's a good thing. So um I'm going to translate this into English. Um, Gokomoli said that up to this point he used short fins in his swim sessions and he is now uh, using the Finis floating fin, which I think is a great choice. And they are now feeling a, lit, a little bit strange or weird. I think, let's point out the difference. The short fin has a very short fin, <laughs> as the name implies. And um, therefore, you need more ankle flexibility and more strength to be able to swim with the fin. The longer fin, the floating fin, has a longer fin which is therefore more flexible. You need less strength to be able to use the fin properly and you get more propulsion because you have more surface area of the fin. Okay, all of that leads to more propulsion and more of a lift, therefore the name floating fin. Okay, it helps you with floating, it's a flotation fin. And I think for beginners, this is a great fin. I can tell you that myself, and people like Thomas Lutz, for example, basically everybody in Würzburg, we used only floating fins. Okay, I never really trained with a short fin in my life. Now, granted, this was by now 2009, 15 years ago. Times probably changed a little bit. I don't think today 
a floating fin still necessarily has a place in pro swimming. But back in the day, we were doing just fine with that. Okay, so today I would, there's not a single swimmer in my swim team that has floating fins still. But I'm just going to throw that out there. Back in the day, we used to do that. And okay, another question from Paddy. Interested to hear your opinion on tools. I have trained over three years under a Trisuto coach and 95% was with a pull buoy. Not one drill, at least when I started out. All right. So I have never actually seen a swim training plan from Trisuto. But Trisuto, the head coach is Brad Sutton. And I like his approach of getting the work done and grinding. That being said, I'm a great fan of equipment. However, if you 95% is swum with a pool buoy, I would be a little bit careful with that because that's I think that's too much. I would think if you use about 50% equipment, you're fine. But in my opinion, you still need the high quality meters in your training swim without equipment because at the end of the day you need to be able to swim without equipment in your competition also okay at the same time we want the whole volume in your training swim technically correct and you can achieve that by using equipment because using equipment will help you with your body position will help you with your flotation will help you with your propulsion all of that leads to easier swimming so to say and when it's easier it's easier for you to hold your technique together <clears throat> okay i can see that pulling is a vital part of most of the triathletes why because number one the vast majority of your events are going to be swim in a wetsuit number two most if not all of you are below average kickers so the kick is going to be not very meaningful for you and then number three distance swimming in general um the main um the main source of propulsion comes from your pole okay that being said <clears throat> you probably know paddy that if you remove the pull kick swimming is going to feel completely different and you need to be able to swim without it okay so to sum it up what i've seen I like to simplify swimming a lot also. So I'm generally leaning towards what Brad Sutton is doing. However, I think you can make swim training a little bit more interesting and still a little bit more specific. I know Brad Sutton is a famous man, but I think that's what I am doing a little bit better than he probably is. But I was also a swimming specialist. So I would, I would argue that my swim training plans, plans are probably a little bit more interesting, are probably, probably a little bit more short, wild, and they are a little bit more specific and therefore can make you better in swimming. Okay, but I'm only offering swim coaching. From what I know, um, Brad Sutton is offering a whole triathlon package. Okay, and I think just, I think I would much rather have somebody swim the training plans of Brad Sutton than the classical bullshit that's <laughs> sorry I'm <clears throat> sometimes I'm too honest than the classical bullshit that's being done in most of the triathlon swim teams which consists of 30 minutes of shitty executed drills another 30 minutes of 25 meter sprints and then I don't know a thousand base work or whatever they call it I, I much rather have you 100 warm up like Brad Sutton than 4100s pull with paddles and 100 warm down that's much better for you Okay, so much for that. <clears throat> um, when should we change from long to short fins? That's a good question. Mm. <clears throat> I don't know if you really ever need to change, to be honest with you. Because a short fin... A short fin is designed to really strengthen and improve your kick. And I gave a long answer to Patty's comment. Um, and I said that the kick is never really going to be a focus of you guys. So I don't know. I think if, if I had a choice, <coughs> sorry, 
uh, something in my throat. If I had a choice, I would rather see all of you swim with the floating fin rather than a short fin. Why? The reason is that I want those easy meters that we swim with fins with good technique. And I think the Finis floating fin helps you more with that than an arena power fin, for example. This is only true for triathletes. If you're a competitive swimmer and you somehow found your way to the stream, you need a short fin. Okay. So we have 40 minutes. We're approaching 45 minutes. I, I like to keep these things around 45 minutes. <clears throat> I I want to thank everybody for... There's another question. When do we swim too much with the fins? It's mm, a good question. It depends on the type of training session that you're trying what you what you're trying to accomplish with your training session i have training sessions for example let's have a look here at what these kids are swimming let's see if i find a good one here here let's do let's do andreas waschburger's training for tomorrow morning Okay, I'm, go I'm going to explain this to you because otherwise you're not going to understand a single word that's been said here. But this is what he's doing tomorrow morning. Okay. He's going to do 100 warm-up. And then he will do two times. This is this. is The idea of this session is a very low intensity recovery type of session. Okay, it still has high volume with 7,000. But here, if you look through it, 100 warm-up, then two times 1,200. Number one is 100 freestyle. Then he does 50 freestyle drill, zipper drill. I don't want to go into too much detail, but it's a technical drill. 50 backstroke, alternating with 150 pull, 50 kick. Okay, so that's 400 plus 400. Sorry, 200 plus 200 is 400. He repeats that three times. That's the first 1200. Then he rests 30 seconds. Then he does the second one with fins. 150 freestyle, 50 backstroke. 150 freestyle 50 butterfly with three kicks to make it a little bit easier okay so you can see already here 50 percent of this training is already done with fins then here he does generic stuff 10 times 200 at 250 one time 100 pull breathing every three um and then he drops the pull buoy and goes 100 freestyle swim the first 50 breathes to his bad side and the second 50 is swimming normal and then he does 100 the second one is 100 pull, breathe every three, alternating with 100 individual medley. And then the last set, again, 50% is swum with paddles because it does three rounds of 400 fins and paddles with a little bit of speed alternation. So 50, 50%, 25, 80%, 25, 50%. Plus four times 175 pull, 25 kick. So you can see out of this training plan, we have already 2,400 with fins. Out of the 7,000, that's more than one third. Okay, more than one third. And this is not even much. Like I have training sessions where we're doing even more fins than that. This was intense today. So this is not a good week for this one. Let's see what these guys are doing. Uh, yeah, this is a good one here for example <clears throat> let me make this a little bit bigger this was an intense session that we did yesterday with the middle distance team um, so you can see 100 warm-up then three rounds 400 fins 75 free 25 <coughs> 25 back 75 free 25 fly so 400 fins plus four times 100 it's 50 percent fins here so 1200 and then here we have 75 kick all out plus 25 easy plus 400 fins. So that's a 500. Um, 400 out of that is fins. So that's 80%. So 80% of that 3,500 is fins. So you can see in this case, we're swimming probably 60 
70% fins out of the whole training. So you can see in that that even for competitive swimmers, the amount of fin swimming can be quite high, depending on what you want to accomplish in in a set. There are also some extreme examples where we don't use any fins. I give you a example, a very extreme example over Christmas. 100 warm up, 150 times 100, starting into 120, best average, 100 warm down. No equipment used whatsoever. In and out. 15,000, done. <laughs> Obviously, that's an exception. Um, how long does the session take for the 7K? Um, somebody like him takes a little bit less than 15 minutes per 1,000 in training. <clears throat> okay, in a normal training. If he goes straight, he's faster. But it will probably take him hour and 35 minutes, hour and 40 minutes, and he's done. <clears throat> Can I send you a video of my technique above the water somehow, Paddy? Um, <clears throat> um, yes, I, I offer a video analysis if you want to do something like this. Also, just write me on Instagram or. Um, Is my email on my homepage? I don't think so. Yeah, just just write me an email. No, don't don't write me an email. Write write me on Instagram. Instagram, you can find me here. Jan P. Wolfgang. It's my Instagram. And Johannes is asking when the next swim seminar in Frankfurt is. Um. I don't know. I don't know. I just have to plan one. Who's interested in a swim in a swim clinic in Frankfurt for beginners? Beginners only. Body position and basics. If you're interested, we can do one. I mean, this should be we should be able to do that fairly short short notice. But I have lots of other projects right now. But I'm I'm obviously I'm happy to to host a swim clinic if you guys want to. No problem whatsoever. Anja, tell Johannes to come to join us for the big swim clinic in Saarbrücken, the three-day swim clinic. Frankfurt, Frankfurt ist nicht so nah, okay. Yeah, just just make just just make suggestions. For now, I think it's time to wrap this one up. Um, don't don't be afraid to get in touch. I'm promise you, I'll try my best to help you, and I promise you to try my best to get back to everybody. I think the easiest way is to write me on Instagram. You can also you can also write me a WhatsApp. I mean, I don't care. I can also give you my phone number if it's not on my homepage, anyways. My phone number is c o six one. Okay, you can also write me WhatsApp. That's even easier. The, the WhatsApp is actually the fastest way to get in touch with me. After that is Instagram and then email. I'm not so good with my emails, but um, yeah, Instagram, WhatsApp is the best way. Will there be another clinic in Saarbrücken? Yes. Who's Paddy95? Have you been in the first clinic? I don't know your Inst I don't know your YouTube names. We have a three-day clinic, which is going to be amazing. And this is going to be... <laughs> yeah, he's already taken. Yes, he's taken. Um, <clears throat> um, the swim clinic in Saarbrücken is going to be from May 10th until May 12th. And it's going to be with me and Marcus Markthaler Marta, Marcus from Switzerland. <clears throat> and the last time, some of the people here have joined. For example, Anja was there and I think it was very, very good. We have a little bit to learn as far as organization goes, but um, we, are, we will brush that up and improve that. And um, as far as the swim training goes, the feedback was really, really good. But we're only taking 12 people. We're capping it out at 12 people, two coaches, 12 people. And 
that's how many we had last time also and i think that worked out that worked out really really good and last time just to take out any um hesitation last time the camp was hosted in german okay i mean obviously we're talking in german if there's only german people there we're not going to talk in english common sense last time it was only german people or i mean german speaking people we had people from switzerland people from austria and people from germany but again write me whatsapp write me a something a, a direct message on instagram and then we're gonna get going on that okay so thanks a lot for your time thanks a lot for all the questions i really appreciate that that makes life so much easier for me and i actually enjoy trying to helping you out and with that being said i will see you guys on thursday with equipment i'm gonna put some good stuff together for you so you look good and you're gonna have some fun with your um with your with your swim training okay all the best thanks for taking part and have a good night bye bye